Hey everybody, and welcome to the third and hopefully the final part of our series to how to make the custom parquet texture. So in the first part, we went ahead and made the template in 3ds Max. In the second part, we went over in Photoshop, made the textures, the diffuse, the specular and the bump maps. And now we're going to put them all together and see how they end up looking inside 3ds Max. So uh, for a scene, I have a very, very simple scene. This is basically, uh, well, a scene I've worked on on a different project of mine, but it's made bare. So it has basically nothing in it. It doesn't even have uh, windows. So for this, I'm just gonna go ahead and render it so you can see how it looks like without anything. So render. And as you can see, it's a fairly, fairly simple scene. So now, let's see how our textures are going to look like when we, once we put it in our scene. So now one of the things that I want to uh, address is one of the problems that architects or interior designers usually have to deal with when they are making their floor textures and that is size. What this means is that in certain cases, you're going to have clients that come to you and they tell you that the floors they want are of a particular size. So what this means is, for example, if we take a look at our texture, the one that we just made, so I'm going to open up that texture, it's like here. Once we made it, if you remember from the first video, I made this to be 50 centimeters. So now this means that this is one meter. This whole texture is one meter by one meter. So this is one square meter. Now, how do we measure this inside 3ds Max? Well, in order to do this kind of measurement inside Max, we have to select, first of all, we have to select the floor that we want to add the texture to and we need to go over and use a UVW map. So once we put this, this is going to allow us to put pretty much any texture that we want. But what is important here is that we click this button over here where it says real world map scale. So what this does is basically telling Max that now once we add the texture, instead of uh, instead of finding out how the tiling is going to be uh, done here, it's going to calculate it based on real world information. And this is exactly what it means. I'm going to take my texture and I'm going to dr uh, drag it into the diffuse slot over here. So that is going to place it in our diffuse. So I'm going to click it. And if I press on the show shaded material in viewport, you're going to notice that now, even though we have a UVW uh, map here, it's just brown. So how do we fix this? Well, we have to use the real world scale over here as well. So click it here. And now I need to tell it how big this texture is. And as we said, this is a hundred by hundred centimeters. So we go 100 by 100. And as soon as we place it like that, it's going to fill our entire room with a texture that's basically 100 by 100. So it's going to multiply it as many times as it needs to. All right, so now let's fill up the rest of the maps here. We have a reflect map, the specular map. So go over here in the reflect, drag in the specular, go inside the specular and change it to real world scale. Again, 100 by 100. And do the same thing with the bump. So in the bump, place it as 100 by 100. Now, the thing is, in the bump map, we have this just uh, white and black, so it doesn't have too much difference. We can decrease the blurring to something like 0 0.1. It should give us a bit sharper lines. And for this, I'm just gonna amp up the bump to like something like 90. 
uh, since we already have a reflection map over here being controlled 100% by this map, I'm going to go up here and the glossiness, I'm just going to make it to 0 0.97, just a tiny bit of uh, glossiness, all right? And once we have all of this, I'm going to let my render go through and see how this thing looks like. As you can see here, now our entire floor is made out of the, the texture that we made, and it's looking kind of nice. Now, here's the thing when you're working with parquets. Uh, the thing is, you need to know what kind of a parquet you're going after. What I mean by this is, depending on, well, depending on the age and the finish, the parquet can look a bit different. For example, here is this image is basically on the right side over here. You have just the wooden parquet, but here you have the lacquered version. So you put this varnish on top of it just to make it uh, last longer, protect it, and in the process it's getting this nice color. But other th thing that happens is that it kind of changes its uh, way, the, the, way, the way it reflects light. So you're bound to end up with something like this if you put in a lot of uh, lacquer. So you're going to get a very shiny look. And if this is something that you're going after, well then our scene over here might be close to what you're looking for. So let's, well, yeah, it is very close. So I guess the only thing that I would probably change here is give it a bit more glossiness, maybe like make it 0 0.9. And let's just render it on this half over here and see the difference this is gonna make. All right, so render, and we can see uh, just a tiny bit of blurring in the reflections, but still a very uh, hard reflection. And that reflection, or the hardness of that reflection, is being controlled by our map, which is being taken 100%. For example, if I want to lessen this effect, I can choose to mix the map with our resident color, or our original color, which here is black, which means it has zero reflectability. So if I go and choose 50 here, it's going to decrease the reflection of our texture. So just so you guys can see it better, I'm going to go ahead and uh, render this. And the reason why I'm only rendering certain areas is because I'm rendering at 2000 by 1000 and I really don't want to sit around and wait for it to finish 15 minutes. So render. And right away we can notice that it's still reflecting, but that reflection is much more subtle. Now, the other thing here is what happens if you have maybe, let's say, something like an older parquet, uh, something like this. In this case, well, you either have to <laughs> clean it up or dust it up, or if you want to get more into this result, then you would probably have to go and even further decrease the glossiness to maybe like 0 0.7, which is more or less going to give us a much more diffuse reflections, which is going to give it that aged look. So let's go ahead and simply, yeah, let's sample this place and see what happens. And from what I can see from the render, now those reflections are still there but they are less visible or less directly visible which is more well you can see the difference exactly here this side much more reflective than this one okay so now the only thing that uh we can change here is well, at this resolution, at this distance, won't make too much of a difference, but if our camera was closer and we went over and in our diffuse or in our bump map, instead of using the texture that we made, which was this one, which was well defined, if I choose to use this one, it's going to give me a bit more to work with. So I'm going to drag it inwards. Well, 
before I drag it, I want to make sure this is 100 by 100 and drag it in here. Okay, awesome. Now, I'm going to try to emphasize this by making it up to 200, which is going to make the bump stronger. And let's see how this thing is going to reflect on our floor. As soon as the render is finished, I can... Well, you know, honestly, I can't see any difference because at this distance, it really doesn't make that, that much of a difference. But if our camera was closer, then we would definitely be able to see the difference. So with this, we basically have our base here all covered in the same textures. So now if you want to go ahead and make these guys smaller or bigger, instead of going here and increasing, uh, well, like you would with the tiling, you just need to control the tiling with the size. For example, if you want to have them smaller, you would probably go something like uh, 200 by 200. That is going to increase the size of the texture. Go down, make sure you change it to all of them, 200 by 200. And now once you are finished with the rendering, you're going to end up with a final result where you, all of your textures are going to be bigger. But in all honesty, I'm just going to leave it at 100, which was the original size at which we modeled this. And I'm going to render out a final image that we can use. Okay. Oops, not 1000, but 100. There we go. And render. And with the render finished, so is our floor. We can see that now we have still have we have retained some of the reflection, but it's a bit more diffused. We have nice looking floor, nice looking parquet. All right, so with this, we come to the conclusion of our uh, rather lengthy three-part tutorial in which we learn how to make totally custom parquet floor. Now, I'm going to say one more time. You can take what you learn in these three videos and use it for any kind of a design. It doesn't have to stop at uh, shapes that are like this. You have way too many shapes. You have circular ones, you have uh, ones that are intricate, you have the ones that are half with small details. Doesn't matter. All of them can be done in just by using these steps that we explained in these three videos. And the great thing about it is that you can take uh, these shapes now that you have them and you can either, you even use the template that we made in Photoshop. And instead of making this wood, you can go ahead and make this from any kind of uh, stone or marble or whatever suits your needs. You have total control over your scene, which is more or less what you should strive when you are working on your projects. So that would be it. If you guys enjoyed watching this video, then don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, as it really does help a lot with YouTube. And that would be it for this video. I hope you guys had a lot of fun, you managed to learn something new, as there were a lot of things that were mentioned here. And for now, all you guys have to do is take care, and I will see you all in the next videos.